Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Oh, hi, Barbara. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. Who all do we have here? Hello. Barbara and Frank. Hello, Jim. Wendy and Angie and Matt. Hello, Jim. Karen and Stephanie. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I heard that. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. I've tried about a half dozen times to get this right. Oh, you, you got it right. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Sorry I was late, but I had a little trouble with Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> me Zoom too. Zoom wanted me to sign up, so I signed up. Then it told me that I wasn't the host. <laughs> okay. No, yep. All right. So uh, um, we have about... How much time, Jim, do you have today? I have about 50 minutes. I have a Reiki at... Oh, I, I could go a little longer than 50 minutes at this okay. point. All right. Because I do have a Reiki coming after this. And my bed is already set up. Super. <clears throat> so the plan is that we have telepathy class, a telepathy class announced for today. And the plan, I suggest, we do practice for our telepathy class in a workshop. And... Um, I noticed that we stay on one topic too long and we cannot cover lots of topics. So I want today to run and cover more topics and run like kind of slowly run, like without speaking faster, just move our mind faster, but speaking slow. And- Can I um, ask a question quickly, Max? Yes. The last, last time we connected this way, uh, for about a day afterwards, I was hearing messages from you. But I wanted to ask you, were you sending them or, or were I, you aware? No, of? not intentionally. Okay. All right. It's just so bizarre. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we can do like about half an hour of just mentioning the topic and reflecting on them quickly. And then we can do second half an hour. We can do either channeling or practice. What do you like better? Well, it's up to you. Practicing probably would be the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll do the practice after that. So uh, the format, I think, Jim, so what, what I want to do is an interview. I will give you the question. I have like about 30 questions. So one minute per question. Just major topics on the telepathy. We just cover kind of rerun the whole class, just explaining a little bit on each topic. And um, try to speak like for about a minute. You can s stay silent for a minute, but try to say something which is uplifting for others, which is not trivial. So it's nice to start from trivial, but it's nice to step a little bit beyond something obvious, beyond obvious, right? You understand, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like obvious thing is like, uh, I don't know, how much is two plus two is the question. And you answer, yes, two plus two is four, but, and then you kind of uplift it a little bit more. Yeah. Right? Okay. Hello? So, so we'll start uh, with a question. So uh, what is telepathy, right? Frozen? Am I speaking? Can you hear yes. me? Okay. Yes. So what is telepathy? Can, can you just kind of summarize briefly? Now, who are, who are you asking that oh, to? Oh, is my sound fine? I was still talking to you all the time. Oh, yeah. So you were talking to me, but I'm not sure who you want to answer the questions. All right. Let me start over. So in the past, we, will, uh, we had trouble that we would stay on one topic for the whole class. And yeah. uh, uh, for the workshop, we need to practice to cover more topic in a shorter time. And I want, to, you, I want to train you, dear Jim, because you know everything, but I want to train you to answer faster and go through the topics a little faster without speaking faster, just moving your mind faster. <laughs> Do you mind? Is it? I don't understand it, really. Ah, you don't okay. understand. All right. Okay. So, so the idea is that we need to cover in about half an hour the whole curriculum, like all the topics. So it's like interview. I give you a topic and you kind of explain a little bit on it. And then we move to the next topic. 
Okay. One minute answers. Well, sometimes that's impossible. <laughs> oh, it is possible, of course. I mean, there's simple questions, simple questions. Okay. All right, so uh, Jim, can you define the telepathy, explain in simple words what it is? It's the ability to communicate with someone else without speaking and move that, uh, understand what they're feeling without speaking as well. Wonderful. What are different kinds of telepathy? There are intuitives, that, which is people that can touch people that and know how they're feeling and what's going on with them. There are psychics that can actually uh, read minds, and there are those that are empathic who can read emotions. And those that are empathic can also sometimes heal emotions by going in and take some, taking some of those emotions away from people that are feeling bad. Wonderful. Thank you. So if you are starting to learn telepathy, where should you start? I think you should start with your belief system because you have to believe you can do it before you can. And you have to, to know that it exists before you can do it. And so therefore I would learn about what telepathy is. And then I would start meditating about how to gain more access to it. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, how do I uh, choose if I want to work with it, um, telepathy? How do they define it? Um, mental versus compassion. How do they define telepathy versus empathy? Like, should I work, start from working on my mental telepathy or telepathy which goes through the heart, the feelings, and the intuitive? understanding of feelings of others which which is the best well, most people most people will open up to the feelings first because it's easier that energy is easier to read easier to feel easier to understand by the human nature but you can work into the psych psychological part of it the uh, mental part later but it usually would start with uh, healing energies and uh, it would start with uh, emotional energies and the heart energies. There are some people that have started with the actual with the mental telepathy because it, it is part of their third eye uh, wisdom. But most people start at the heart wisdom. Wonderful. Um, how important it is to have a consent from the other person before reading their mind? Mind. Uh, if they are awake and conscious, I would say it's important to have permission from them to do it because it's just polite. But if they're unconscious or in a coma or you're, you're, uh, no, you don't know the person, perhaps, you can send a message to them subconsciously and their, their subconscious will either accept or deny what you're sending to them. So you can send healing to people that are not aware that you're doing it and their subconscious will answer yes or no. But for those people that are in front of you, if you're doing a Reiki healing or whatever, I would definitely get permission. How important is uh, the motivation and intention when you do a telepathy work? I would say it's very important because they have to be, uh, when you're doing telepathy work and mental uh, work, they have to be engaged in that too. They have to understand uh, and believe that it can happen. Otherwise, they're, uh, it's not gonna be as strong, it's going to be less accurate, and it's going to be uh, a sort of a waste of time in, in some cases. There are other people that are wide open that um, their thoughts are like, a, right at the edge of their minds and and some people can read them right away without any permission or anything but for the most part most people you would have to engage them and let them know what's going on so that they can be involved and participate with you how important it is to have a positive intention when you do the work extremely a positive intention is 
a huge part of it for me. You can have a negative intention. However, that, that person will feel it. They will, uh, and they could actually uh, turn that off. If you have a negative intention, they may be able to block that and say, no, I don't want you in my mind with that kind of energy. So because the body, the mind, the spirit will feel the energy that you're sending. So a positive energy is absolutely essential. Uh, how important is to respect privacy of others when you do telepathy? Very important. They, that is why you have to get them involved because they will regulate what information can be read. Um, how important is to create a protective environment when you do, meditate, uh, do telepathy? It's important. Um, I, a lot of times when you're doing telepathy, it's just between two people and um, it's not in, with a group setting. And that's pretty well protected. Not many people can burst into a private conversation when it's telepathic. However, if you're doing telepathy with a group of people, protection is very important because a lot of uh, other things, negativities, tricksters can get in. And with a group of people, there is also usually a, a greater uh, amount of negativity because there's at least a few that may be doubtful. It is possible to, to catch some negative influences. If you open yourself up and you are not well practiced in that, make sure you, you're in a positive environment. If there is a, an argument going on or there is a lot of negativity around you or the television is working, you possibly don't want to open yourself too much be protected when, when there is lots of negativity around. Um, how, mu how, how, is, how much is important to meditate before the, doing the telepathic work? It is, a, it's, uh, that depends on the individual. Some individuals are more inclined to telepathy than others. Mm -hmm. So some may only need a few meditations or uh, five or six meditations and others may need to meditate for months before that can happen. It also is part of your belief system. You're working on opening your belief system to these things because all your life you've been told that you cannot do these things. These things are not allowed or these things are not correct or these things are, um, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. There are times when, the belief systems run very deep, and so you have to open your belief systems uh, to these the fact that these things can and will happen. How, how important it is to go, get in a special state when you do telepathy work? And once again, that depends how, on who you are. Yes, oh, thank you. And that once again, it depends on who you are. If you are someone that, um, needs full concentration for it, then you definitely have to get into uh, the right mental state for it. After a while, <clears throat> once you do telepathy for a while, it's just like anything. Once you learn it, once it becomes part of who you are, you don't have to uh, get in that frame of mind so much. It becomes more automatic because you understand it, you know where it's coming from, your belief system's intact, and you are ready whenever the time comes. Thank you. Now, there are situations where um, people wish to communicate telepathically, say for practice or for practical reasons, but uh, they are not well tuned to each other. So how important it is for people to synchronize and tune to the same frequency, same understanding uh, for, for establishing the telepathic contact? That's a, that's a good question, and the answer is it's, a, it's much better to be on the same frequency, same page. If, before you do anything of that nature, you might want to do a, an ohm or something that uh, brings all the energies into one a specific vibration so that you're on the same level of, a, of vibration. Uh, there are different 
things you can do. You can do some uh, ohming and, or you can do some uh, toning or things to bring the vibrations uh, to one level in the room. And that also helps to connect people better. Wonderful. So that's, um, we're done with the preparation for the, for the work. Now, what sexual work is including? Um, like how important it is to separate uh, and alternate the sending state and receiving state? I, I didn't get the question. Uh, how, how, how important it is to separate the sending state when you send information and receiving state? Well, I think that uh, first of all, you're automatically, if you know that you're going to be sending and not receiving, you're going to prepare for that. And if you're going to be receiving and not sending, you, you're going to be prepared for that. Because you're going to want to get in tune, like we said earlier, with the person that you are with so that you can uh, receive or send properly the information that you want to to go. So it's good to be in a relaxed state. It's good to be in a positive state of mind. And it's good to be um, in a secure state for that, for when you're beginning. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I just want to comment. It's similar to normal, normal conversations. Uh, some people uh, are good listeners and others are not so good listeners. So if you're not listening, you, you will not get the, the, the message. So it requires silence in yourself and really tuning in into accepting something from another person. It yeah. might come from inside. The message might come from the heart, but you have to be silent and ready to receive. So, you know, in the school or kindergarten, when they work with kids, sometimes they do the exercise. And now everybody quiets down and listen. Just listen to what is there. Listen to the quietness. And it's a wonderful exercise for yourself when you do telepathy. Just listen for the quietness. You have to like really hear nothing before you receive something. Um, <laughs> how important is to send very specific, very precise, very um, well-formulated messages? I think that's important so that it gets through properly a well-formed message, a well-formed thought process will get through much easier and with greater success than something that is not coordinated and unorganized. Um, now we need to discuss a little bit how do you tune into the right message because there is a, <laughs> so many conflicting messages coming at the same time. That's a good question because with so many messages coming in at the same time or so many people trying to receive messages at the same time, there's going to be a lot of extraneous thoughts. There's going to be a lot of uh, leakage into the other, other thought processes. So you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with a little bit of a blend there, at, which we saw last time. Some people were, that were uh, doing receiving, but they were receiving each other's messages and not the ones being sent. Exactly. Yeah, last time there was a lot of good receptions, but not in the right time or not from the right person. There were like times when two or more people received this, I think it was three, three people received the same message, but not the one which was sent by, by right. us. They, right. The, the one message that was received the most was about trees and nature. Uh -huh. Nature seemed to be the big receptor um, at, that, at the last time we practiced. All right. Michelle had a question. Hi, James. Hello. Um, hi. I got a question. I, well, I'm trying to connect with uh, Tekker and her group, yes. and I've been trying various techniques in connecting with them is there a certain um meditation from youtube or whatever that you could recommend that i could try well they're a little different because they're not in the same room with you they're not and they're not visually uh available so 
it makes it easier when you can see them or when they're close by, but they're like 72,000 miles up in space. So it's a little harder to connect that way telepathically. They can hear you because they have a, te a technology that can receive some thought-based uh, requests. And they can hear you if you speak directly to them because they have receptors that pick up on the names that you may call. Like if you say Tukur's name, the receptor will pick that up because their technology is tuned into that. However, that's not really telepathy. And telepathy is something that happens when you're much closer together. Um, I okay. don't know if you can, I don't know if we're uh, able yet to send telepathy that far. I don't even know if they are. So, but yeah, you, because, can, um, you can send messages to them and they will receive them. Yeah, because <laughs> I, for some reason, I got the name, I got the image of a reptilian, but I don't know the real name for them that you guys okay. use on the website. I, I can't get mental reptilian. images of a reptilian. Well, there's a friendly reptilian group that is part of Gurkvignir, but they don't speak much and they have not been uh, uh, very talkative to us when it comes to when we talk to Gurkvignir as an alliance. But okay, they do. They, they've been and, eager to come to me. It's weird. But they are friendly and they are, um, they are telepathic. So they have uh, talked to you? Yeah, they, they're trying, like for example, um, this past weekend, I tried to do um, psychic art, I, uh -huh. like for the first time, and that's when they, the, the friendly reptilians came through and they were like, we want you, we want you, we want you, we want, to, we want you, and I'm like, kind of shocked, like, Well, what, um, what were you drawing? I was trying to, I, I, spoke, I gave a mental message to Ted Curse asking, can I use you as a model? so I could have a better connection with you and your group. And she was like, you know, doing poses and stuff. And that's when the reptilians just kind of came through like, like, like kids in a candy store, you know, like we want a picture too, we want, we want. And it's like, okay, I'm oh, yeah. trying. The, <laughs> the friendly reptilian children, yes, okay. Yes, they've, that's not the first time I've heard that about them. Um, I've had two other people say they've had like very friendly reptilians come and we're acting like sort of children. And yeah, and I, that's why I was like, what is this? And so, yeah, that could be the reptilian children that are on board, uh, just having some fun. But uh, yeah, they do like attention. But you see, their parents are, uh, their, their culture, the friendly reptilian culture is not one that's, that's really like that. So that's a big change for them uh, to be outgoing like that because they're very quiet and reserved and they're very, but they're very friendly, but their children, you know, they're teaching their children, their culture and stuff. And, you know, there's a rebellious age where they go do what they want anyway. It says you went through that. So uh, they're not listening to mom and dad. So um, <laughs> they're just coming through and say, yeah, we want you. We like you. We're having a good time. And, uh, parents aren't watching at that time. They're probably at work. So they sound um, like typical teenagers. Correct. So, um, yeah, so that's the friendly reptilian, more adolescent or children. Okay. And, um, and how, I know that Tucker is also a very busy woman. She's a very yes. busy person. And how do I connect with Aliran's? so that I'm not bugging Takur so much. Well, the thing is, Takur is there to be an ambassador now. They have relieved her of many of her duties on board the ship because she is such a good ambassador to the world. So she is freed up a lot more to do the, just that. So don't worry about bothering Takur. That's what she's there for. Um, okay, I'm... So you well, really can't bother anybody else because they have their jobs to do. But you see, Sengi has taken over the hybridization portion of the programs, and Nina is in charge of the colonies. Whereas before, Takur was sort of run, uh, running a lot of those things, but now there's some other leaders that have stepped up, and uh, she's been freed up to do more 
of the uh, ambassador work to Earth. She also is still the um, executive assistant, which enters all the information into the systems. And she, she can multitask and do that very quickly. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of information some days. But she's very good at it. So they kept her in that position. But she still has time, makes time to talk to humans. Of course, she's not all talking to humans 24-7. So right. she has time for her work as well. Yeah, and one last question, and then I'll be done. With the alien DNA thing, how how would someone like me know that they've gone through it if there's no memory behind it? Well, usually there's some outcome to the DNA because they they infuse it for a while and then they activate it. The reason why they don't activate it while they're infusing it is because they want it to be properly activated into the system so that it will give you positive results. So okay. they, they, they infuse it first and put it in places where they know that it may uh, be useful, and then they activate it so that it will become part of the DNA project, if you will. Okay. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. You're welcome. Uh, can I ask a question, Jen? Sure. Yeah, I I I like to use hypn uh, hypnotic uh, techniques to help uh, a person to get into a state w which can help uh, to do telepathy work. Yes. So do, do do you have any idea what to do? For uh, to use technology. Uh, hypn hypnosis. Can you explain what that is? Uh, I, I would like to guide a person to get uh, to be more oh, relaxed. Hypnosis. hypnosis. Okay. Yes. yes, I got it. Um, yes, hypnosis is a uh, attaches to that part of the brain that is telepathic in some ways because it can change the way people think. Um, be careful because it is not actually. Uh, the area of the brain that is for connecting psych uh, psychically. It is for the a part of the brain that can receive suggestion, which is similar but not the same. Do you understand? Yes. So be careful with that because suggestion is a, an action make uh giving them a change in their activities or actions or being whereas just talking psychically is a communication and not necessarily any kind of instruction or change in their uh person so when you do hypnosis make sure you are very clear in your uh your thought process that you're not going in to change anything that you're only communicating so that it will go to the right place. So uh, another question is, uh, what's the differences between telepathy work and uh, uh, conversation with God, so something like that? You don't need telepathy to c uh, converse with God. Anyone can do that. Uh, but for God to talk back and you hear him, you may need some telepathy or some uh, abilities to channel or something. I'm not uh, sure exactly how God works it. But uh, I what, what, what I mean is, uh, I, I ask myself some questions and I quiet myself and uh, I get some answer. Ah, you get the answer? Uh, I, 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 I test some people, they can do that. Very good. Well, I can tell you this. God is works in mysterious ways, and I don't know all the things he's doing right now, but I know that that is very possible. And I know God speaks to me sometimes, and he comes through me in channeling sessions sometimes, but his, his way of doing things is a little different. But that is fine. If your belief system can connect with God in that way, that's amazing because uh, there is no incorrect way to 
connect with God, in my opinion. If you can connect with him, it's wonderful. Okay, thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Any more questions before we start the practice? Anybody? All right. Uh, whoever is uh, uh, okay, I'm, I'm preparing the question. The, we'll do the practice as we did last time. So I will have the words which I will give you through writing in the chat, and some people will access the chat, and some people will access uh, will not look at the chat, and uh, they will guess the words through telepathy. And we'll do one word at a time. So uh, type to me those who are, of you who can. Uh, who can access the chat? How many people we got? Uh, just type to me who can type in the chat. Okay, um, so we have Barbara, Kirin, Stephanie. Okay, I think that's enough. So, Michelle, so now it's too many. Um, let's do, uh, I guess, Kirin, Stephanie, and Barbara will do the sending, and everyone else will do the receiving. How about that? Is it? I mean, we can switch. It's 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 either way is fine for me. Okay. So, other guys, please Barbara. close your chat and don't look at it because we don't want cheating. So, only I forgot the names. Barbara. Yes. So Barbara is sending. Stephanie. And who else? I don't remember. Who else is? Type it again, who I said. Karen. Karen. It's uh, Barbara, Stephanie, and Karen are senders. All right. So the senders, I will paste for you now the, the, the words. Just a second. And if anybody else sees the words, um, I guess you will be senders again. So th those who don't see the words, you will be receivers. I'm not, I can't see the words. So the people who are receivers have to move, they have to close their chat. Right? Yeah, close your chat right now. Mm -hmm. My, I can't see it to eat, to eat, eat anyway. So. <laughs> so. All right. Um, so I'm pasting it now. Close your chat, those who are not sending. Okay, done. All right. So did anybody who is not supposed to be a sender see the words? Uh, no. They are, they are um, popping up on the screen. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't it's, see anything. It's got away now, but I saw <laughs> just a lot of writing. She okay. did. Andrea, Andrea, I guess you go to go to be a sender too. We want a clear experiment. No, I didn't. I didn't actually like see the words. I just saw a lot of words. Yeah, but stuff. maybe you're. Can you do? I the wouldn't thing? cheat. <laughs> Why don't you go and be the sender? Because right, you're be already sender. exposed. You already All right. had a visual memory <laughs> of that. So we want a clear All right. experiment. Got it. All right. Done with Are that. you a sender also, Max? Yes, I'm a sender. Of course. How can I not be? Oh, so <laughs> then the receivers are me, Frank, Wendy, Elle, and Michelle. Yes. Okay. Is anybody left out? I don't think so. Okay, good. All right, so a short meditation before we start, and then we send the first uh, number one. Okay. All right. You can do the OM with me. One minute to send the first, the first, hold on a second, I will turn on the clock. Okay, one minute to send the first word, number one.
Okay, Jim, you can collect the, the answers. Okay. Frank, what did you get? Hello? Frank, you're muted. Uh, nothing. Okay, <laughs> that's all okay. right. Wendy? <laughs> you're muted also. Wendy, what did you get? Still I can't hear anything. Still muted. I can see it on the screen, she's muted. I can unmute you. Hold on a second, I'll try to unmute you. Uh, Wendy, I'm unmuting you. Okay, thank you, Max. Yeah, you good? Uh, I heard the name Sakar, is that correct? Uh, we'll know in a second, we'll collect well, the other okay. answers. Okay, L, what did you get? <laughs> I got a um, one store house with a very interesting roof with two windows. Okay. And Michelle, what did you get? I also got a house with two windows and a, and a front yard. Oh. Well, so we have two people receiving the house. Wonderful. Interesting. With two windows. Yeah, um, I got the two front windows too. And I got an orange or an orange ball. Mm -hmm. Say again. I got an orange ball or an orange. Okay. Anybody else? That's all? Yep. All right. The answer was uh, we were sending a chicken egg. <laughs> an egg? What? <laughs> oh, God. So, what was okay. interesting is that Jim got something round. Yeah. But the house, it, two people received the house. I didn't send the house for sure. Well, the interesting thing is there's two windows in each of them. Ah, wow. So very yeah. specific house. Yes, with two windows. I'm looking at in my window at the house, but it has four, four double windows, so it's not the one. Well, I, have <laughs> say, I have to say, I was um, picturing an egg, but I, then at one point I pictured a chicken having an egg. Oh, like, wow. In a garden. You know, I was trying to do it like along the lines of remote viewing, so... Uh -huh. I was sending like the chicken having the egg and then I was oh. focusing on the shape of the egg. So if you got something round or that or a teardrop shape, then maybe that was closer, but. Um, yeah, I got it. Or it seemed like a, an orange ball or an orange, but it kept <coughs> changing shapes a little bit, but mostly it was round. Excellent. It's interesting when you're sending um, the way that you send it because I sent Jim specifically that round egg, you know, and I kind of whispered, it's an egg, it's a chicken egg, you know, okay. and then I thought, let me broadcast this to everyone and see if they'll get it as well. So there was you, emphasis put on on Jim. Are you, so. are you focusing on people sending Images or words, because images, words and images. But I'm just saying in general, are you? Are, are, oh, that's a good not, point. I mean, if some people are sending words and some people are sending images, that could be confusing. I was using the same process that Karen just mentioned, and I hadn't thought about using the words in my images. But I think I'll do that as well. I would think that, that the image would be stronger. You can maybe say the word in your mind, but the images would be stronger. So, for instance, if someone got a rounded shape, that's a lot stronger than getting exactly, you know, what I mean? it's closer. Yeah. Anyway. Right. But this is a good hey. learning lesson for receivers. I mean, senders. Yes. Wow. And, I was on the other end just, the last time. Do but you have to with this. paper and pen? Do you try to write? Do you try to draw what you're seeing? Oh, oh that's you could. Mm. Yep. That helps. The other thing is too that some people might be able to receive words better than images, and some people may be right. able to receive images better than words. Yeah. So, because I think Wendy was hearing a word, so and not seeing, maybe not seeing an image. Let's do more practice. We have another right. nine words. And uh, check it out. And if I invite everybody to. Sorry, I'm trying. Sorry, to sorry. Mute myself. Sorry, February. I don't know what's happening. I have something uh, started. I can't turn it off. Ah! I muted you. You're good. 
But did he say chicken? <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, the word number two, we are sending, we have about um, 50 seconds to send. All right, the time is up. Let's collect the answers. <laughs> okay, we'll go to Frank. Did you get anything this time? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, no matter in hypnosis state or other state, I, I, it's very hard to get an image for me. I see. Uh, but we, I can see the words quite clearly. I see. Okay. Um, We'll think of a suggestion to maybe help you. Wendy, what did you get? You're muted. Hold on, hold on. I'm in, okay, you're unmuted now. I'll unmute it again. Wendy? I didn't hear that. Say again. I can't hear her. Can't hear you. I, I think got she it. said three. I got it. Okay, next. Uh, Michelle. I keep seeing a pine tree and it's driving me nuts. Okay. Well, we had pine and, tree last time. And <laughs> I didn't get a pine tree last time. I got a house last time and I sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, L, what did you get? Um, actually, I'm not sure because um, nothing specific. I was thinking of a flower at some point, but um, I, it was very mixed, very mixed. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got a stick and then a tree and then a totem pole. All, they just muted one into the other. It was like a tree or, that muted into a totem pole. Wow. We have trees all the time. Yep. Is it everybody? Barbara, yep. oh, Very just good. Cinder. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh. Is it everybody? Yeah. I think so. All right. So we were sending a whale. <laughs> oh, for the love of God. <laughs> whale. Come on. This is not my day to be in tuned. That's okay. I mean, uh, that even the failure is is an experience. Is that the, even the failure? Don't worry about it. We're just practicing. Right. Okay. The word number three, send it now. You have 50 seconds to receive. Hold on. Can I just, uh, Frank? Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to send you directly so you receive something, okay? All right, Frank. Thank you. Tune, right. tune to Angie. And I'm just sending through it. open eyes. So if you want to have it through open eyes, you can have it. Start. Uh, take mm. take okay. a deep breath and relax. Relax. Starting, Don't try, just listen. Starting to send the third word now. The time is over. Okay. Did you get anything this time, Frank? Uh, 
I can see a unclear image of a bird, but it looks like an American eagle. <laughs> okay, keep silent. All right, nice. Uh, next. Uh, let's see. They all, all the names switched around places. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> what did you see, Al? Um, something like... Um, um, woman's egg or like a um eggs when you fry them fried eggs i got it something right. like that got it okay. okay michelle i got a strawberry and please don't let it be a craving I okay. a strawberry <laughs> okay I, and i i think wendy is gone wendy left okay so and i got a blue x or cross a plus sign it was a blue plus sign, and it was moving. It was like a windmill almost. Moving in which direction it was moving? Um, <laughs> I think it was moving clockwise. Oh, spinning? Yes. Got it. Okay, is it everybody? Yes. All right. Oh. The answer, which is very important, it is. It was an eagle. Oh, somebody got an eagle. Frank. <laughs> First time in our practice, it is, um, we, we finally got it right. Frank, yeah. you got an eagle that was correct. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, maybe it's my imagination. Uh, I don't know. Last no, time I tried, think... it was correct. <laughs> it, that, that, was, that is what we sent. And yeah. um, so this, last time we tried 10 times, there was no guesses right. And this time, out of three, we finally got it one right. Yeah. Super. I'm going to keep Frank. working with you, Frank. Yay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, number four, send in now for 50 seconds. Okay, time is up. Hey, Jim. All right, uh, Frank, where'd you get this time? Uh, it's, it's, it's a sun. Sun? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Next uh, one. I'll go. All right, what, what did you want to say? Frank, what? what? Uh, I, I, I try not to imagine. Ima uh, Iman, imagine it by myself. Just, just allow myself to allow my mind to be blank at first, and uh, at the last, uh, I, I see a sun. Thank you. Okay, Michelle. I was first drawn to the word red, and then I saw um, a rose bush. Oh, that's nice. So it was red and bush. Yeah, first the the word red, R E D. Oh, and red. then, okay. and then um, I saw um, a rose bush okay. afterwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wendy is back. Did you have an answer, Wendy? Can you unmute her? Yeah, just a second. I will unmute Wendy. Just a sec. Here. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Wendy. What did you see? Repeat it a few times because the sound is so completely messed up. Just repeat it. Several times. Zero. Did you say zero? 
Repeat it several times. The sound is messed up. Ah, oh, she said nothing. Okay, got it. Oh, L, what did you see? Um, I saw a flying kite, but before that, um, something like a ball of energy, but it transformed into a flying uh, kite. Okay, and I saw a boot or a shoe. Okay, is it everybody? Yep. Okay, yeah. uh, the word number four was sun. It was what? sun? Mm -hmm. Frank, so Frank, you got it again. Excellent. <laughs> he got two in a row. I would wow. say Ellen, Ellen's close because I was drawing this yeah. on my thing. And I wrote red hot by it, and I wrote uh, uh, yellow, and then I oh. wrote, and I have a Tur ball. See, turn up your volume a little. Oh, can you hear me or no? Wait. Just speak closer to the microphone and turn on the. Oh, can you hear game. me now or not? You can hear me now. It, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Now you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. said, I wrote, I drew a ball, and then I was just spending time doing the sending out the energy of drawing the ball. And then I wrote red hot. Someone said they got red. Uh -huh. I did. And yeah. then, so, you know. Wow, cool. Can you show it closer to the camera what you drew? A little higher, a little closer, a little higher, 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 higher. You see? Higher. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> and when, with the eagle, I drawn this. Can it closer to the camera? Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, but because I, I just because I'll just tell you when you're trying to pick stuff up and I know this is a psychic you can sometimes pick up shapes and things and it's a good way to yes to trust, to trust your first instinct that's coming in and I would yeah. say everybody should really use a piece of paper and try to imagine what first comes in write it down no matter if it's just a line or a square or something because the shape may mimic what you're seeing, but you may not know what it is. Correct. You know I mean? Like who said they saw like a squiggly line with the whale? Because the whale has the, that squiggly shape. So I don't know. I mean, it's up to you guys. Yeah. But it, I know that that really works with uh, picking stuff up and you start to trust your instincts and your mind's eye and you don't dismiss stuff. Cause that's the first thing you generally do is dismiss it and think it's not uh, well, oh, yeah, I kept, I get uh, several different things all at once. And exactly. Then I... So if you write them down, make a notation, sort of draw them, you might but find I... that in that you're closer than you think. Yeah. All right, let's do the last word and we have to let Jim go. Okay. All right, uh, the last word, um, number five. Number five, and you get one minute. All right, thank you. Time is up. Okay. <laughs> Frank, what did you get this time? Nothing. All nothing? Right. Yes. You got nothing. Okay. Uh, oh, we have someone new. Hi, Christopher. How you doing? Did you get any words? We were sending telepathic rewards. <laughs> Talking. Uh, Christopher, uh, first Christopher, did you get any words? No, Max. 
All right. Uh, when, oh, Wendy, sense. can you say again? No, there is no, no. Sorry, I missed it. Okay, got it. Anybody else? Michelle? I got the seashore. All right. And Al? I'm um, um, first scissors. Um, before that, uh, uh, something like guitar. Not really sure. I What's, just what, what is scissors? Uh, for, for cutting paper oh, and uh, hair. And okay. And I got a square that turned into a car. <laughs> All right. So that's it, right? Yeah. Um, we were saying that Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, he's a square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, just close it up, Jim. All right. Do you want me to do a closing prayer? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Sorry, you got here so late, Christopher. <laughs> Good to see you, though. Thank you, Father, for all the things that you do for us and for this time of fellowship and communion that draws us closer together in the light and in the love of, of all the things that you are all about. We ask that you just be with us now as we go our separate ways. As we walk in our own paths, please keep them lighted brightly so that we walk in the correct way and know that we are doing the right things. We love you and we hope that you are uh, with us constantly. We know that you are and we praise you and thank you for that. And amen and amen. 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 Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I, Jim, you're not coming next next week, right? This, on Friday, you'll be uh, here. Next week, I will be out of town. And actually, I may be out of town for the next two weeks okay. on Friday because okay. I'm going to be doing some traveling. Mm -hmm. And I have to go to my goddaughter's uh, graduation party next week. And so I'm leaving on Friday and coming back on Sunday. But I, the following week, I'm going to Canada, and I'm not sure how long I'm staying there. I, and I know that it'll, be, that it'll be at least through Friday. So for the next two weeks, I will be traveling. Okay. I, uh, I think I will plan to do it without Jim, so come at the same time on next two Fridays, and we'll continue doing some sort of the same same thing maybe we'll do more more of uh, reiki or maybe we'll do more of telepathy i will announce and, that but after that i'm i'm good until the workshop so that's mm -hmm. good so good. that'll be, good. give us two weeks before the workshop i think or three i might have a guest though uh, it would be i mean in in the meantime when you're out i might invite a guest we'll see how it goes all righty but um yeah some traveling is in the uh forecast for right now all right and jim i see you i see you um 3 30 3 30 on your time okay yeah so i'll see you later today i have a reiki in between all right nice guys um i wanted to ask you uh, have you heard about um alex orbito like orbit no. alex orbito He's a Filipinian uh, guy that uh, performs operations with his bare hands mm -hmm. and he dematerializes the skin. He uh -huh. gets in the stomach, in the organs, and uh -huh. he pulls away negative energy. After that, he materializes the, the skin and it's like, um, it's like a small cut or incision and sometimes mm -hmm. there is none. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there are videos in uh, YouTube mm -hmm. uh, you can see how he pulls out from different parts of the body this um, it looks like blood but they he say it's like concentrated mm -hmm. negative energy yeah I, it's yeah. very interesting I'm aware of those I think they're these are transdimensional so they they just shift the dimensions when they do the thing 
Yes, and he gets in trance, yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so this was interesting. Wanted just to tell you about it and to ask you: Have you have you ever? Um, yes, yeah, I've seen that came, before. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. It's, yeah, it's I, really I, I read the accounts of people who I trust, so it was like uh, I, I really believe it's real, and um, it's a transdimensional uh, magic which they do. They can. Yep, and more and more people are doing this uh, in Europe uh, and in. Uh, um, I'm 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 not sure about the places, but there are a lot of people that are doing this on different places now. Mm -hmm. Because we it's have not far from Reiki, and Reiki also we do some sort of that thing. We just don't we don't it, get it's not visual. Out, but, <laughs> yes. But, yeah, yes. but but we there is in Reiki there is this thing where which is called psychic surgery. We we, we do that. It's an, an advanced level for master's level, but we, we do yes, that. it's. Psychic surgery is not exactly the same because you don't go inside, but you do it from the outside of the body. Right, we don't put the hands inside, no. Energies and things of that nature. So, but yes. we take out the, yes. the, the energy out and uh, replace right. it with uh, good energy. And you can remove pain and things of that nature mm -hmm. as well. So, good, cool. good. Love you. Have a good trip, Jim. And um, we you, will Mary. see you. <laughs> when we see you. Uh -oh. okay. Have fun, James. I, uh, I have a lot of work to do in between my trips and traveling. So I'll talk to you all later. Much love. <laughs> Bye. 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 I have to see how to get out. Oh, here we go.